I want to talk about obstacles we face homeschooling. I feel like this is a good time to talk about that because there's a lot of people that are finding themselves in a homeschool space. A lot of people have reached out. Is that yeah. the correct way to say it? People yeah. are reaching out. People are in a, they're just searching for different methods and different resources. So, to do this. and y'all know, those of you have, that have been here for a while know that I am not a fan of giving tips and tricks and things like that. However, I do feel like I've been in the game long enough to be able to just... The game. The game. Don't try to play me. Cause <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this for long. Okay. Be a veteran. Well, I'm not a veteran. Okay. But I can speak from my experience and just kind of talk about some of the obstacles that we face. I feel like you're going to get a lot of information about why homeschooling is so wonderful. And rightfully so, because it is. It is wonderful. There are many benefits, but I feel like there's not as many people... Um, that are gonna easily speak to the struggles. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can do that a little bit. This is 100% our perspective and our experience um, based on who we are and um, the journey that we've been on. So everybody's stories are going to be different and there are gonna be some similarities, some mm -hmm. things that we have in common and then there's gonna be some differences because our circumstances are different. I just thought it would be good to sit down and talk about it like openly and honestly. Talk about the struggle. Yeah, because it's struggle. real. Okay. <laughs> and um, if you have been here for a while, then you know your friend is all about having a vision for her family, for life in general. Like vision is a big deal to me because if you cannot see yourself doing a thing, then you won't keep going. In particular, I've gotten quite a bit of new homeschooling moms even though we are all different um, just being able to see yourself in a space is really helpful um, and I think that when homeschooling was first placed on my heart I had no idea what it was I've talked about this many times before um, and then when you first start to research you see families um, and none of them look like you yeah and Representation. it is a bit although I am 100% looking for more than just the color of your skin. Mm -hmm. um, it it is the easiest people. indicator yeah. um, to see that you belong somewhere, you belong mm -hmm. in a space. So I kind of went into it knowing that I wasn't gonna see a lot of me here or it was gonna be difficult to find people that looked like me. Mm -hmm. um, but my gosh, it is so nice to be able to see somebody that looks like you in a specific space even if they don't have your same beliefs mm -hmm. um, even if they are not um, their goal is not quite the same as yours it's just like the easiest indicator that you might belong here mm -hmm. um, that didn't happen for me I, I think it took me a while before I found anybody that was African-American in the homeschool um, community and it's not because we're not here um, it's just because you don't often see us when I first started, that was one of the first obstacles that I had to kind of jump over. And I know this is going to sound really strange, but um, I am a photographer. And so one of the very first things that I did was start to take pictures mm -hmm. of my kids uh, doing their schoolwork in their homeschool space, whatever I had back then. And that really helped me to put a vision of us as a homeschooling family in front of my my eye so that I could see that I we mm -hmm. belonged here and that was going to give me the the energy and the encouragement that I needed to be able to push forward and find um, where we fit in this space so I feel like that was my number one my very first obstacle is to see myself here, homeschooling mm -hmm. my family, the other side of the vision portion is being able to communicate that to you. Because your vision of a homeschool family was from our very small... Well, I went to private school for three years. I went to Christian school. When she started talking about this homeschool thing, it was just... You just have no vision yeah, for it. You just have no, 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 no point of reference for what right. that is, what that looks like. You have a lot of just question you know what what is this thing gonna be what does it look like you know yeah um, and even even if you would press beyond because um skin color is just the easiest thing 
you know, to be able to identify yeah. um, as belonging in a space. But beyond that, a lot of the homeschoolers that we had been exposed to were more like less live off the land. There is so much beauty in that, in that individuality yeah. that they bring to the table. That was not going to be us, you know, we yeah. live not in the city, but in a suburb. Yeah, we don't live 20 minutes outside of Philadelphia. So we're not yeah. in like the, con the country. That's kind of what you my my pictures and yeah, images yeah. of, of in the woods. That's kind of yeah, exactly. That's kind of what it was. So like we're not in that space. I did meet a guy right after Serena had brought it up. He raved about you know the homeschool and his kids were older, so it gave yeah. it allowed me to see his family and to see you know how his kids turned out. You know that they weren't weird. Don't knock weird, yeah, right? So because Cameron will tell you in a second yeah, that weird will. is okay. The thing is, we did not have much exposure. Mm -hmm to the uh, diversity that there is amongst mm -hmm. homeschooling families, um, just because you don't see them doesn't mean that they're not there. There are mm -hmm. different ways to do this, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be done this one way. Just increasing your exposure, mm -hmm. um, because just because you don't see something there doesn't mean it's not yeah. there. And so that was the very first obstacle that we just kind of had to face head on and do the work and try to find you yeah know, what is this you know what does it look like and just yeah. because this is the way it looks over here it, you find other thing, other ways and other people are doing it totally differently right and um you can take bits and pieces from each and kind of make it make it your own you can <laughs>
um, for not having all of those things accomplished. But homeschooling is a full-time job. Um, it's not just I stay at home. Um, you happen to be home, but it's a full-time job because you're tending to their hearts, their minds, and you're trying to figure this whole thing out. And figuring this whole thing out is a process because you gather information, but just because you're getting information from different places doesn't mean that information is going to stick for you. And you're going to try all these things and all these different ways of doing things, these different schedules, um, these different curriculum, these different activities, and you're trying to make things fit or stick in your home that may very well not. And that is something that I think we all go through because you are looking for things that are going to help you accomplish a goal that you're not 100% sure how to accomplish. So if you are in that space, like we all are in that space. We just evolve mm -hmm. from stage to stage and uh, step to step in it's okay like I hope that you find comfort knowing that this is part of the process and mm -hmm. will make your homeschool and your family and your life exactly what it is meant to be. They can see me. What? <laughs> so Kendall has picked his color palette. Can I do it? Absolutely. like responsibility management? A lot of this time, I've had jobs that required me to do overnight travel. Obviously, it directly affects her and her schedule and how she's able to get things done. A lot of times, we're looking for schedules in order to be able to set and complete each day and feel accomplished. And for me, that was a major obstacle because I had to learn how to relinquish that desire to feel this sense of accomplishment mm -hmm. in the way that I think we're used to feeling mm -hmm. that. When we went to school, when we went to public school, there was a, a day, a, a way that the day flowed and there was a schedule that we kept. Mm -hmm. And you naturally try to mimic that yeah. same thing when you, when you are at home. But it just can't be that way, at least for me. Um, because the flow of your home is different based on what type of job your spouse has, what type of responsibilities you have. Mm -hmm. And that's all something that's completely individual to each mm -hmm. one of us. On top of that, there are some parts of your schedule or your day or your routine that you're trying to make fit that just are not going to fit. Mm -hmm. I had to just really start to focus in on my kids and what what works best for them and build our routine, mm -hmm. um, our daily routine, off of what is working best for them at any given time period. And we've also had to be very intentional about like household responsibilities, cooking, oh my gosh. And grocery shopping, <laughs> and things like that. Because not only, you know, with my job, she has worked, so she mentioned she's a photographer. You know, toward the beginning, she was doing, you know, gigs. She was doing yeah. family shoots. She was doing weddings and things like that. So you have not just the event, she has to edit and, and get all that stuff done. So it had to be time in the schedule for her to kind of go and get those things done. So we've always had to be uh, very intentional about who's doing what this week, um, meal prepping, and you know, just stuff like that. Yeah. When it's her time, you know, setting out a block for her to when she can go and kind of have time to herself and get her stuff done. And I think that the biggest thing I learned in that space is that things are ever changing. Like you could find something that would fit or work for um, this month and next month it'd be totally different and you need to switch it up mm -hmm. and change it again. And that's why I always talk about being flexible because you can get really frustrated by that. Like finally getting into a groove and then all of a sudden, the next day you wake up and that groove is gone mm -hmm. um, because of different changes uh, in your family life mm -hmm. or in any one, you know, 
person inside of your family mm -hmm. unit. Kids go from being infants to being walking toddlers mm -hmm. to then talking a lot more or you know there's just yeah. different needs at different times and you need to be able to pay attention to that and know that like flexibility is part of mm -hmm. this game like you need to be able to to um, adjust. To adjust. Yeah. So yeah just really paying attention to your own home um, and not being distracted uh, by the ebbs and flows of someone else's is like a big obstacle that once you really get over you can get into a nice groove for your own family so so bear's artwork is starting to become it's starting to remind me of the book it's just so great Cam won't let me see his work yet. <laughs> All right, let's talk curriculum. So I think that the obstacle that comes along with curriculum, the thing that I learned early on that produced a lot of fruit in our homeschool or success in our homeschool was that I wasn't bound to curriculum. Um, it's nice to have it. You know, when you stumble upon uh, a curriculum that you can add to your homeschool um, that serves a purpose, Mm -hmm. um, or will help you to accomplish a goal, then that's great. But I think that if you start off thinking that curriculum is going to make your homeschool, you're going to struggle with that. So I didn't have as much of a struggle with curriculum because I always started, I led with our goals first. Mm -hmm. um, like what is it that you are trying to accomplish? Um, in the very beginning, you want to read, you want to um, write basic math, and uh, shapes and colors, just all the things that kids are just naturally curious about. That's what we started with. Um, and I set goals based on that and then we worked towards those goals. So yeah, just not getting stuck on mm -hmm. curriculum or that pull that makes you think that curriculum is going to make your homeschool because it's not. Mm -hmm. So while vision and money and time management, all of those things were some of our first set of mm -hmm. obstacles, I think the obstacle that often is the biggest for us is, am I doing enough? Even when you find something that fits, there's just always this looming thing that says, am I doing enough? And that's where a lot of the comparison trap comes in because you see what other people might be doing and it makes you feel like you're not doing enough. Mm -hmm. Probably the the biggest obstacle that I face, the way that I've worked my way through that is just to stop letting that rhetoric, is that the right word? Float around in my mental space mm -hmm. and in my heart. Probably like halfway through our homeschool journey, I was determined to stop that cycle of am I doing enough? Instead, replace that with we're right where we should be. I always remind myself that his grace is sufficient. I have everything that I need. And just simply changing the way that those thoughts are so are circling in my heart and my mind really helps you to move forward because it is not fruitful to meditate on the idea that you might not be doing mm -hmm. enough. Because what if you aren't? <laughs> like, there are many spaces where I'm 100% sure I maybe was not doing enough. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, that doesn't really matter um, because it's all about learning and growing and getting better. And if you don't have strength to do that, then you won't. Mm -hmm. You won't grow. So I really, I think that that was how I started working through that obstacle of feeling like I'm not doing enough and saying, you know what, um, I, I am, I am the best teacher for them. So you qualify. Right. And. And there's a scripture that I stand on that says that I have more than enough for every good work. Mm -hmm. For me, homeschooling, being their mom and their teacher is a good work, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I, I am enough and I have more than enough and I have everything that I need. Mm -hmm. And just really meditating on that really just kind of like makes my heart and my mind feel at peace mm -hmm. enough to be able to do the work that I'm supposed to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because we're not going to get it, I'm not going to get it all right all the time. But I want to grow and I want to learn from here. And I think that was when I really started to defeat that obstacle that was like, I am not doing enough. Yeah. <laughs> you know?
how do you handle me dealing with comparison? Because you really don't. All that stuff doesn't really fall on me. Yeah. So I just try to be as encouraging as possible. Brian is very like laid back and cool about things. So when I come to him with stuff, he's just like, oh, yeah, you got this. That ain't no problem. That ain't no problem. Meanwhile, she's freaking out. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, don't you see what I'm talking about? And he's like, that ain't no problem, that ain't yeah. no problem. And I think that his lax attitude and behavior towards it, although frustrating sometimes, really gave me the space to be confident in whatever direction I was going in. Mm -hmm. So recently, with moving into unschooling, um, he may not have understood all yeah. of it, but he still came to it with that very like relaxed, laxed, attitude that gave me enough room and enough space to yeah. be confident in what I was moving in. Yeah, well over the years the ideas that I believe that she has that have come from the Lord, like you, once she's implemented them, you've seen, we've seen a lot of positive a lot of yeah. growth from them with, with the kids, um, just what, whatever these ideas they've been. Serena, Serena is typically is usually changing things. Things don't really stay the same for really too long. I've learned to just go with that and try to be supportive. And that sounds, uh, I'm going to say this again because that sounds all noble, but in the thick of it, it's like frustrating and it can feel overwhelming and it can feel confusing, but I think that I have learned over time to silence those like temptations to be frustrated because just because you have certain feelings doesn't mean that you can't still move mm -hmm. in confidence mm -hmm. but this is something that um photography and video really lended itself to healing me in that area because i would feel so chaotic <laughs> on the inside as a mom and a parent and i would get certain clips throughout the day mm -hmm. And I would look back at those clips and see that I looked nothing like I felt inside. Yeah. And that, for me, like, I always talk about this on the channel about mm -hmm. how, like, um, sharing our journey really has been healing mm -hmm. for me and a space of so much growth for me. So while I may not see it on the outside and subscribers mm -hmm. and numbers and things like that, this journey has meant everything to our life and our mm -hmm. homeschool because in doing the work of filming I get to watch those things back and see mm -hmm. what the realities are and I get to see how you move forward yeah we I have... talk about that you know we talk about just I guess the way we were talking about it is you can have you know faith in your heart without in your head and yeah. just continue you know just 100 move forward yeah and I have a, I actually have um, the talk that I did at a homeschool convention um, was on that and why I feel like memory keeping in homeschool is so important. Um, so I actually have that on our Patreon space mm -hmm. um, that maybe I might be able to share because I really 100% believe that with all of my heart and it took a lot for me to share that because I felt like it was so unorthodox mm -hmm. in the space of homeschool. I feel like everything I have to say a lot of times You're pretty homeschool. unorthodox. <laughs> Pretty much. And that's probably one of the biggest reasons, obstacles mm -hmm. in my journey that I'm currently in right now is just pushing myself to share even though I feel like nervous about whether or not people will make that connection. Mm -hmm. um, because to me, I really do learn from everything. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like because it's not plain and simple, um, just like curriculum would be mm -hmm. plain and simple, that sometimes people will not get it and it will not be helpful but mm -hmm. I'm gonna I just want to say thank you for all of your encouragement and your love and support in lifting me up in that space and letting me know that you know it's speaking to a part of you that is necessary or needed because I do I do that helps me to build my confidence in sharing in a different way because I really do believe that life is full of lessons and those lessons don't have to come from mm -hmm. one specific place. A lot of what we learn is, is, a, is a heart matter and not a, a, not a head matter. Mm -hmm. And we want to continue to share from that space. So we'd love to know like, if you would like to share what are some of the obstacles that you're currently facing in your homeschool, your life, that um, maybe we can all provide some insight into helping like us move beyond those obstacles so we can grow there. Yeah, everybody can just share in the comments. Life is so very full of lessons, so... We are living and learning. We live and we learn. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>
You are a ham and a half. I don't even know where you came from. <laughs> We're gonna ask where we got it from, how can we get them? And we don't have that set up yet. We don't? No. When are you gonna get it set up, right? I don't know, I'll see. You got a lot of stuff to do. You got a lot of stuff to do. <laughs>